Good afternoon and welcome to Premier Fitness and our Facebook Live Lunch and Learn. Today our featured speaker is Jim Pierce Ruland. He is the director of the ACMC Rehabilitation and he's going to give you a tour of his new facility and answer any questions that you have. Okay? Right. Thanks June. I'm Jim. Excited to announce our new location. Um, we're neighbors now with Premier. So uh, without further ado, show you the way. So our main entry comes through these double doors for Premier Fitness. Uh, we do have a, a separate entry exit, but these are now motorized doors. So we've got nice handicap access. Um, so these are our, our entry doors. And we've got uh, our reception off to the right. Let's say hi to these folks here. Tammy, Don, Jay, say hi to the, the camera. So these are some of the guys that make the office work. So I'm all back here. Got uh, a reception area. So sure. Um, and then we'll, we'll walk back here. It's been a, a couple years in process, but uh, thanks to the engineering crew, uh, IT, a um, whole bunch of different folks that came together, Tammy and Etkowitz and the ACMC Foundation, uh, administration, the board for, for getting the project off and getting it going. Um, huge transformation and, and, a, and a major upgrade from, from where we came. If you want to come around here, so we got patient scheduling. Uh, we have some lockers here for, for patients. That was a, a feedback um, uh, in years past for patients to have a, a secure place to put something. Uh, as patients are finishing up their appointment, they're going to schedule for follow-ups here. So this is our front gym. We've got uh, uh, treatment areas. Uh, like a about double our, our, our square footage from our prior location. It's about 5,500 square feet in this in this area. Uh, so we've got a nice front gym and then a separate back gym. I'm going to show you here in a second. Right, walk back here and we'll meet Cassie and Cody. Hi to the camera. Hi. And Vera back here. <laughs> These are some of our physical therapists and physical therapist assistants that uh, help see patients every day. This is more of a documentation station. And then uh, off to the side, we have an occupational therapy area where we'll see hand, shoulder, uh, extremity, upper extremity, carpal tunnel, uh, stroke rehab, you name it. All right. On going back here, we've got individualized treatment rooms and an area for, for cervical traction, uh, lumbar traction, treatment for the back, for the spine, um, and also it, it, patient evaluations where it's a little more private. Uh, here we have just a section for modalities, heat, cold, some general storage, patient restrooms off to the, to the left here. Another treatment room. We've got an abundance of treatment rooms. Uh, so you can see multiple patients at once, and it doesn't feel like we're on top of each other. It feels like we've got nice spacing. Uh, over here we have a room a little bit more dedicated towards uh, balance, dizziness, and vestibular care. So one of our specialties that we treat is uh, balance and dizziness, uh, fall prevention type things. So there's a lot of nice things that we can do for that. All right. And here I want to introduce Amber and Amelia. Hi. Hello. This is our speech therapist. Amelia is a speech therapist uh, student. And uh, if you want to say a few words to the camera yeah. about what you treat. What we do. Um, so we're the only speech therapist here. So we see kids, adults. So adults, we see Parkinson's, post-stroke, TBIs, brain injuries, that kind of thing. And kids, we do everything from autism, um, speech sound disorders, language disorders, late talkers. We kind of see it all. So that's what we do mostly. All right. Thank you, Amber. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving back along, we get more to a uh, pediatric dedicated room. Uh, and we have more equipment coming thanks to Tammy and the foundation. Uh, and sensory swings, uh, different type materials. And if you look back off to the left here, we've got a little view window. If you guys want to go back around, you can wave as a parent coming in. Um, sometimes it's uh, appropriate for uh, a child to be um, 
you know, if, if behaviors or certain things, they're not uh, interacting well with the therapist, with the parent in the room, the parent can go out and, and look through the view window and still kind of keep connected, but be a little bit out of sight, out of mind, so the therapist can achieve some objectives with the, with the treatment. We'll see gross motor delay, fine motor delay, um, and, you know, a lot of different things where we're working on desensitization, treatment of, of children with autism, um, handwriting skills, uh, just the, the enhancing the ability for the child to be age appropriate with, with play. Uh, another individual uh, individual treatment room here. Uh, so we have two more uh, offices, uh, individual treatment offices than we did in the, in the previous location. And then back here is kind of the, the room to move. So you'll notice the uh, rubberized floor is a different surface uh, than, the, than the carpeted floor. Uh, it's a space where we can move a little bit, test our athletes out. Uh, we've got a nice almost 11 foot ceiling so that we can uh, do vertical activities, overhead sports. Section to practice balance here as well. But it's a nice forgiving surface guys did a great job on it. All right. As far as uh, patients that we treat from, from a physical therapy standpoint, as I mentioned, balance and vestibular care, pediatrics. We also work a lot with orthopedics, post-surgical care, total joints, total hips, knees, shoulders, uh, sprains and strains. You know, it's, it's shoveling season right now. We're seeing a lot of slips and falls, uh, seeing some uh, back strains, neck strains from, from hoisting the, the wet, heavy snow. So lots of those different things. But uh, we are uh, available by referral for OT and speech. Uh, PT, you can either uh, be seen by referral or or through direct access. They can't see you. They can't see it. You can hear me, but you can't see me. All right. We're going to hit pause. He's on the phone. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Do you see me now? It says no, it's okay. Can you see I'm, it? I've been seeing it. All right. Well, we'll keep going. So post-surgical care, um, obviously we're looking to avoid surgeries if, if it's possible through, um, through the appropriate rehab strengthening, prevention type, type things. Uh, but their whole gamut of care from, from infancy to uh, the elderly, we're, we're happy to serve you. we got a good crew. We have fun. It's, it's, it's a, Nice to come into a new facility and uh, be connected with Premier. We envision some wellness programming that's going to come out of this. You know, our patients that are, are getting done with their care here are going to uh, ideally continue their care afterwards, their home programs, through a wellness program with Premier or, or in general. But uh, we, uh, we like what it's given us, a lot of opportunities here. I think we can head back up here and see the second half of the gym. Are they, are they all finishing up up there? Still there. Just about. I have a question. Sure. Some people would be apprehensive about coming in yeah. without a doctor's referral. Mm -hmm. How can they do that and feel comfortable about doing that? So our phone number is 440-997-6680. Uh, I will tell you the majority of our cases are referred cases through the physician, through their primary care physician. Uh, we're on Epic, so we can see the doctor's notes, they can see our notes, we can send staff messages, and if we pick up on anything at that first visit, that ah, this, this needs your doctor's eyes on it, we're going to send that patient back to the doctor, we're going to send a quick message to their physician. So um, occasionally some insurances are, are, are going to require it but that's getting less and less in terms of a, a referral to see us. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a new paradigm and it's not, not typically the most common way of, of patient accessing us, but it's, it's been Ohio law and many of the states have adapted. I think most at this point have, have adopted direct access. Um, statistically, it's, a, it's a, a cost saver is what they've seen and, and the safety is no less. If it's a barrier for the patient to to take the steps of going to to their provider and then coming out, it's one one visit less for them. But I will tell you, most of them, you know, 
know, we'd like to, to have that physician interaction or nurse practitioner or physician assistant referral. We value that relationship because I think it's critical for the you know, long-term health of the patient. But, yeah, good question. All right, any other questions? Uh, not right this minute. Not yet. We'll head up All right, and see the other part. Let's go ahead and head up here. Oh. Ended up moving on the, the snowiest day of the year. And that was an experience. I'll go ahead and pour this, this side. So we've got individual treatment bays for our patients. Uh, we're going to curtain off the, for privacy. Again, we've got nice spacing. Keep everything at least six feet apart. The nice thing about that is. We've had the ability to test equipment positions and then move them and move them again and, and try to isolate the most efficient use of space. So we are a, a long, narrow rectangle, about 30, 35 feet wide and about, I think, 150 to 180 feet of length from the front to the back of the building. Um, I think that's that's all I have. I mean, I think those cover the key points. We also provide services in, in uh, clinic in Jefferson, clinic in Conneaut, at the family health centers there. Uh, several therapists in those locations. We uh, provide <laughs> clinical care to inpatients on the acute acute uh, hospital side, so PT, OT, and speech there. Uh, we have trainers in several schools, athletic trainers at um, Lakeside, uh, Edgewood, and uh, St. John. Um, one of our trainers works in direct um, uh, in the office suite with Dr. Bird in, in our orthopedic section, our orthopedic department, and um, we have a lot of communication between those two departments. Student athlete gets injured, and our trainers see that they can get a direct link in with with a doctor Franley or a doctor Burden to accelerate that that child's care so that they don't have to delay. Particularly concussion care, um, can, you know, if, a, if a child suffers a concussion on the field, they need to be removed and they need to be cleared by their physician. So I think that team and doctor Franley does a great job. Um, Kim at Edgewood, Kathy at Lakeside, and, and Stephanie at, at St. John. It's a nice, well-rounded uh, care where we're, we're trying to serve all these, these gaps. So what are your hours? If, if Good question. So we will we'll be a little bit flexible. Like if we have a patient that needs a little bit of an outside, the typical hours, we can accommodate that. But generally speaking, we're 8 to 6.30, uh, Monday through Thursday, in this location, and 8 to 5.30 on Fridays. The satellites have a slight variation on that because there's fewer clinicians, so they run slightly more condensed hours. But generally speaking, between those hours, we can get you served, get you seen. I have a question. You may have answered it, and I missed it, but um, I know the speech therapist. Yes. She's a specialist in that. Are yes. your therapists specialists in certain areas, or are they pretty well-rounded that they could help? Yeah, that's a good question. We have... Um, so we have, I believe, a total in our department, uh, 10 or 11 total PTs, uh, if I'm counting all the facilities, inpatient and outpatient, uh, one, two, three, four OTs, two speech therapists, and, and I would say about six PTAs, so physical therapy assistants, and two CODAs, so certified occupational therapy therapist assistants. Um, each clinician tends to have their own niche kind of specialty where they enjoy treating. Uh, most are cross-trained to serve, serve many locations. Some specialize a little bit more in pediatrics. Some specialize a little bit more in, in balance and vestibular care. Uh, most have a nice broad training in orthopedics. Um, a couple of therapists have training in dry needling, which is a, a skill akin to uh, acupuncture, but it's kind of the, the Western alternative. Uh, to to that. It's not to be deemed the same as acupuncture, but it's the use of acupuncture needles to uh, release trigger points. So several of our therapists are trained in that. And you treat vertigo here? 
Yeah, we treat vertigo. Uh, that's certainly one that's near and dear to me. It's one of my most favorite to treat, but we have several therapists that also treat that. Um, so spinning, if you wake up in bed, roll over and you're spinning for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, there's often a very quick fix for that. Uh, it's the most common cause of dizziness. And we're talking rapid recovery, rapid improvement uh, for most cases. Um, there are other causes of dizziness which we can identify and program and, and typically yield really good results out of it. You are the director, but do you also treat as well? Yeah, I'd say it, between 15 to 30 percent of my time is, is spent in clinical care. Um, I enjoy it. I like it. Sometimes it'll pull from the, the paperwork side and the scheduling side, but um, you know, I do enjoy it. So if we flex up or if we have somebody off for, for various reasons, I'll, I'll move more into the clinical care, usually in, in the outpatient side. All of our therapists will typically rotate, almost all of our therapists rotate into both inpatient and outpatient setting. Good questions, thank you. Uh, hopefully the feed worked and uh, welcome any of your other questions that, that might come up after this or as people, as viewers watch it. So feel free to call us, like I said, 997-6680 or email me. Um, be happy to get back to you. You don't necessarily promote long term. You try to. It well, depends. I think when you're dealing in, in like a, a therapy referral or a therapy episode of care, you, you're probably talking from a handful of visits. Up, you know, some will need a lot. Some will need 20, 30, 40 visits, depending on the diagnosis. But a lot of times we're done in you know, six to ten visits. We can make a, a pretty significant impact there. Um, some insurance restrictions are going to hold us back from going more. Um, some will you know, be a little bit more forgiving. So we'll try to train the patient and focus on education and prevention. Whatever we can teach the patient to do, you know, ideally we'll teach them here and then and they go next door and, and carry on their, their mission and hopefully have a little better semblance of how do I stop this from happening again and, and what are the things to look for if it is going to happen again so that I can head it off to the past. And we always welcome that too. If, if you've been a patient through here, it doesn't mean you can never stop. We, we love it when old patients come in and just give us a quick update or just a, a, a say hey and hey I'm doing great or this is, this is what I ended up having to do. Always, always love hearing from patients who, who have come through our doors. Thank you for the plug. <laughs> oh, for sure. Thank, I'm looking forward to, the, uh, to having a new neighbor. So it is, uh, it's a nice, nice upgrade. Okay. Well, thank right. you very much for your time. Thank you much. Thank you.